And today here I am in Angola, New York. It's a small little village about 30, 30 minutes south of Buffalo. And I'm standing by the side of the road, right by the main, that's Main Street, going right through the town. So I'm here in Angola. I've driven through Angola many, many times on my way down south. And it's the site of one of the most horrific story. When I, when I get into it, it's very, very, right? Mm -hmm. A friend of mine is here with me and she's saying, yeah, it's pretty brutal. It's a very, very brutal, sad story. I am gonna get into it. First, I want to say, if you've been watching my channel, it's just in California. I'm back home in Toronto for a couple of months. So you're gonna be seeing uploads coming from all over that I filmed in the past uh, year. California, Florida, Chicago, New York City, here in Buffalo, uh, many other cities all across America and Canada, and brand new videos. So I've got a lot that I'm uploading. So this is my friend, Sarah. She's been watching my channel for a while now. We've been friends for a while now. Mm -hmm. And we were, you watched my Rick James video. I think that's how we started talking about Angola. Yeah. Because you asked me what I've done in Buffalo. Because mm -hmm. you come to Buffalo quite a bit as, as a Torontonian. Yeah. It's what Torontonians do. You go mm -hmm. to Buffalo to shop. To shop at the outlets. Yeah. You know, that's about it. That's about it. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's some other. Hey, there's a lot of things. And well, you asked me if I've done any grades. Rick James, Kristen Pfaff. Yeah. And then you mentioned the Angola horror. Yeah, because there wasn't very much, but that seemed to be something that wasn't covered a lot right. at all. Like, no one knows about it, but it was this horrific train wreck in 1867. Right. A lot of people died. No one knows about it. Yeah, and the way that they died is what makes the story even the, the Angola horror. Brutal. And the way it was covered in newspapers at the time, it was very sensationalized. There were lots of... Um, really horrific details about the bodies and how they died and yeah it's very yeah disturbing yeah so you read up a lot about it i read up a lot about it. there's a sign right here it's going to give us a brief little uh overview of the story we're going to get more deep into it but behind us is close to where the angola horror actually happened but we're going to actually find the bridge and it's, you're going to say what bridge well let me tell you let's go <laughs> Okay, so right here you can see Angola Horror. It was a train wreck. One of the worst train disasters occurred 600 feet upstream on December 18th, 1867. Mm -hmm. The last, and the, the camera might be shaking a bit because it is very cold, it is very cold <laughs> in November in upstate New York. The last two cars of the Buffalo and Erie Double R's New York Express fell from the trestle, burned, and resulted in 50 deaths and over 100 injuries. And probably more. Right. Yeah. So there is a memorial and a gravesite we're going to be going to as well. But right now, so this is not where it occurred. It's close. And what you pointed out to me is something odd, Sarah. Sorry, come with me this way so we can get a good shot. There's a playground here and one of the... There's a train. There's a train. Like... I don't know if that's in good taste. <laughs> <laughs> it seems a little odd. I'm confused. I don't, yeah. Uh, it seems odd to put a train here. It's a little offensive. It's just kind of like, you know. You know, but this is where it occurred. So close to where it occurred. We yeah. got to go find that bridge because yeah. there are remnants of the bridge. The train fell down into the gorge, two of the cars, mm -hmm. and we'll get more into the story there. Yep. Ready to go? Mm-hmm. 
Let's, Let's go. go. I should add that this is the park named Kenneth J. Herman Senior Park in the village of Angola. So around 2003, well not around, it was dedicated in 2003. And we're gonna go up this river right now and find the, where exactly it happened. So Sarah, we thought we'd kind of have a little bit of difficulty finding the bridge, didn't we? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Literally, we turned out of that parking lot, looked yeah. to our right, and it was upstream. It was right there, yeah. And here it is. Oof. Wow. It's actually really crazy being here. Yeah, we've been reading about this for a while, back and forth to each other, and this is it. Isn't it nuts? It's crazy. Yeah, wow. That's a drop, though. Oh my God, That's yeah. That's actually horrific. So, why don't I say what happened? It was December 18th, 1867. The New York Express left Cleveland and was due to arrive in Buffalo, New York around 1.30 p.m. John D. Rockefeller, he was supposed to make the journey, but he was late. His baggage was made it, but he didn't. So his baggage was on one of the cars. There was four baggage cars, one second class car, and three first class cars. Now, what about the passenger cars was seems very very dangerous now mm -hmm. what were we talking about what was at each end of the car uh the coal stoves that coal. would heat the uh right the train and then in between that in like all the train cars were kerosene lamps that right. kind of lit the lit thing. The, yeah. so when they crashed all of that kind of yeah. yeah so the train lost time on the journey by the time it passed angola so it's just getting through here yeah right to here it was running two hours and 45 minutes late traveling and it was traveling really fast they're trying to make up time yep. its last passenger stop was over in dunkirk and it also stopped at silver creek but that was just to take on wood and water mm -hmm. so there were different train tracks at the time right there's two different types of train tracks now they're more universal but it's a train near the trust bridge near big sister creek you're looking at it it ran over a frog, which is the crossing point of two rails. And then the front axle of the rear car was slightly bent and the frog caused a wheel on the defective axle to jump off the track, derailing the rear car, which then swayed violently from side to side. Let's see if we can get any closer here. This is, it's freezing. Mm -hmm. We're not dressed for this, but this is, this. I mean, look at that. That's really crazy. Wow. Yeah. Let's walk over there and see how close we can get to the bridge. So the brakes were applied, but the train still traveled at considerable speed as across the bridge. Mm -hmm. The last car became unattached from the train and it plunged down into the gorge, which was, this is December, it was ice. Yep. So it was very icy, mm -hmm. slipping down, and the water was ice. It was frozen over. Yep. Here we go. Oh yeah, this is a much better view of the bridge. The second to the last car also derailed, but made it to the other side of the gorge. Then it slid 30 feet down the embankment. Only one person was killed in that car. Here we are, we're very close. This is some sort of construction going on here. Yeah. Okay, so, Sarah, we know the last car, yeah. it plunged 40 feet wow. down to the bottom here. So here, I mean, this is, this bridge has been around for a while. Also, oh it's gosh. just like, it's so quiet it's and so peaceful here. Right? You would have never thought. Right? How quiet is it? It's really nice. Yeah, yeah, it's <laughs> very nice here. Considering what yeah. happened 100 years ago. Right. So here's where it gets very, very gruesome because the passengers were thrown together at the end of the car <laughs> onto the overturned stove. Yeah. And then the, it's almost like a, like a, it's a, adding, wor like getting worse and worse. The other stove flew down to the end of the train. Yep. Falling upon the passengers, it's releasing hot, hot, what was it? Like hot burning coal. Hot burning coal. Essentially burning them alive. Oh, the kerosene lamps added fuel yeah. to the fire. Yep. Only two people escaped alive from the carriage. Some may have suffocated, mm -hmm. but the majority were burned alive. Yep. There are photos, by the way. There, there are lots of drawings. Lots of if drawings. You search it up, and um, obviously they didn't have photographs, but the photos are. I mean, the it, the drawings are like people, victims, like burned. Right. Like, and they're all like, when should I say this? I don't know. Yes, say it. Out. But 
like when when you when a body burns they kind of um their their joints kind of stiffen up like that and so that's in the illustrations and it's very like morbid and they're charred and it's it's hor- i mean but like that's what they reported on right in the newspapers like they they wouldn't it was so graphic like they they they, they didn't have any i don't know respect for the victims weren't you say, the time? weren't you saying to me that they also that the newspapers over reported yeah they sensationalized everything and it it was such a big deal that people in the UK even heard about right, it. Right, so in it London, yeah. It was just such a huge story. And then you look at it now, and it's just like such a beautiful, quiet, peaceful place. You would have no idea. At the time, wasn't it at the time like the worst dream? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And witnesses that were here, they could do nothing. They could do nothing. And how long yeah. were they listening to the screen? Five minutes. Five minutes of screaming. Of screaming. That's horrible. Horrible. Horrific. So it's right down here. One of the worst stories I've ever heard. Can it's just you and I were just yeah. talking about five minutes of people burning, yeah, alive. Yeah. 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 Well, that reminds me of um, the station. The station nightclub fire. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And that was documented, and you could hear it. In, oh like, yeah. There's that one video. It's they, the worst thing I've ever. Heard. Worst thing, and they keep taking it down too off of YouTube because it's yeah. very horrific. Go yeah. on. Sorry. That's about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, it does remind it's yeah. Like people were trapped. They had no way out. I mean the yeah. ca- the train car would have been scrunched together. Mm-hmm. They there are there's fifty people. They're yeah. on top of each other. Probably more. They haven't documented everything. Right. But um and then I was telling Scott um in the car how so there is I guess to read more about this, there there's a professor at the University of Buffalo. Her name is Charity Vogel, I think. She wrote an Angola Horror, so she's like the expert on this. And um, she was saying one passenger is like recounting, or maybe a witness. He was just saying how he thought he saw two small children um, in the fire, but it might have just been two adult torsos because that had of what burned, I was saying. Been burned. Yeah. So. Again, we don't know, but it's it's just like stuff like that that you're just kind of like, this is awful. Like, right, right. <laughs> you know yeah, I mean? it's it's unbelievable. Yeah, um, yeah. Wow. And again, it's just so peaceful. Very. Yeah. You ready to? We're gonna go to the memorial now. Mm-hmm. In a moment, it's up in Buffalo at Forest Lawn Cemetery, where Rick James is interred, and Kristen Pfaff, and a lot of uh, New York politicians and notables. But there is a memorial there. We have to get there. Should it we, is cool. Should we mention the pig man stuff? Or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah? The, it, well, there's a little tunnel here yeah. that we just drove through. We're going to drive through it on the way back. Yeah. We were thinking we were going to get out and walk through it, but no. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's a weird story. Tell us. It's uh, it's just some like local legend. Um, there's a guy named the pig man or something, and mm-hmm. like he he haunts this bridge. Or so. so so like the the victims of the train wreck also uh, allegedly like their spirits haunt <laughs> haunt the area. <laughs> this, yeah, which yeah. makes sense. Um, but to me, it just feels really calm here. It yeah, doesn't feel weird no. or eerie or anything. But yeah, and the people say they see a pig man. A man either, either human body with a pig, pig face, face or a, or a man that just wore pig parts, and yeah. so teenagers it became a local legend. Teenagers yeah. drive through like when they get their, yeah. uh, you know, driver license. You go on the, you know, you yeah. in a small town. There's, there's really nothing. So I'll show you that as we drive through there on the way back. Okay. But this is the location. Yeah, it is cold. And it's just like an empty kind of lot here. There's just yeah. There's nothing around. There's really nothing here. <laughs> no. There is a cemetery nearby, a pioneer cemetery. Yeah. yeah. Oh, here, here yeah. we go. Wow. I thought it wasn't in use anymore. What you're looking at here is an aerial view of the bridge right there in the center of the screen. This is a close-up of the embankment where the train went down. There are no known photographs of the bridge from the time of the wreck, but this picture here is believed to date to the turn of the century, so it provides a look at what it may have looked like in the years right after the accident. And in the early part of the 20th century, The railroad reconstructed the bridge 
they used a concrete shell that was placed over the top of the old bridge. So the skeleton of the former bridge is inside of the new span across the river. So right here, this is the supposed Pig Man Bridge. It's a one lane uh, road that goes right through. Apparently it's haunted right here. Here we are at Forest Lawn. It's still only like 410, 420. They are closed. The gates closed earlier now. However, the gates they closed at 5 p.m., but they actually close at 4 nowadays as it's gotten um, uh, darker. They are going to let us in though and get our video done, which is so nice though. Just past here, and they're in section 3, is where we're going. So here we are, section three in Forest Lawn, Buffalo. And uh, fortunately they close a lot earlier than we thought. But luckily it's the nighttime. This is my third time at the center at least. And the other time, first time I came here, they let me in after hours. And again they did, they're very, very sweet. And they told me where to find the memorial somewhere in here in section three. And I'm looking, looking, looking. Sarah's looking as well somewhere in this section right here and it's getting dark. We found it. Wow, the security is so nice to let us be here right now, Sarah. Yeah. That was quite an ordeal to find this. And it is dark, known but to God. Buried in this quiet place are the unidentified victims of the Angola Horror. Disastrous train derailment on December 18, 1867 in Angola, New York, which left many injured and claimed close to 50 lives at its fiery journey's end. Nearly a third of all who perished lie here. Unknown, their shocking sacrifice stirred outcries to make the nation's rail travel safer. Wow. And marker... Place 2015. 2015. This was hard as heck to find this in the middle of, and where it's getting really dark. Wow.
Thanks for watching, everybody. Thank you, Sarah. And just before we leave the video, I just want to say that Sarah has an Etsy store and she's a wonderful, brilliant artist. And Sarah, tell us about it. Uh, yeah, I have um, greeting cards and tote bags and cute little things over there. Um, so yeah, check it out. We'll put a link in the description. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Scott.